Hi everybody, th this is Dave Vellante. We're back here in San Francisco at the GE Industrial Cloud event. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Kelly of Wikibon, and this is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's continuous production. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from, from the noise, we bring you the best guests. Jan DeWitt is here. He's the president and CEO of Healthcare IT and Performance Solutions at GE. Jan, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thanks, uh, thanks uh, Dave for having me, thanks uh, Jeff. Yeah, so we were talking a little bit off camera. You are essentially, we've been hearing a lot about the industrial internet, the, the, the industrial cloud, uh, hearing about the solutions that GE is, is building, uh, predictive analytics, et cetera. You're a consumer of these solutions, right? Talk about your business unit a little bit. Well, I mean, my, my business unit uh, as part of G Healthcare is, is providing uh, IT systems for healthcare systems, um, whether it's departmental workflow solutions, uh, EMR type systems, analytics uh, on top of that. Yeah, okay, so very specific obviously to the, to the healthcare business. Talk about what's happening in that business, how it's transforming and how you guys are responding. Yeah, I mean f first, I mean I, I think this whole uh, yeah, industrial net focus, uh, maybe for, for my industry, for my business comes at, at the right time. Okay, this, yeah, if you look at, at healthcare, um, this is an industry that is going through a lot of pressures, right? Reimbursements going down, and yeah, as an as an industry, yeah, a lot of pressure to drive and quality. Okay, that's always been the case. But on top of that, yeah, there's now the productivity, yeah, uh, deliverable. Okay, the, this industry needs to find ways to bend it, its cost curve. Now, from an IT perspective, if you look back the past decade, um, a lot of money has been invested in what I would call digitizing uh, many of the processes in in healthcare and. Yeah, since a couple of years, this is now shifting to yeah, what I call the next inning in this game, which is to drive interoperability and then analytics yeah, and, and workflow productivity. Okay, and that's where yeah, what we're, uh, we're building with the industrial internet is going to enable me yeah, to build better products that cater to those productivity and, and care quality needs. Now, you, you essentially mentioned, Jen, that, that the, the top line is getting squeezed a little bit, yeah. and that's certainly the case. Uh, you know, we see it. It's obviously a big discussion in, in this country. Um, there are other regions of the world where that that transformation has, has, has taken place. So yep. What can we learn from that? I, what what uh, I mean first? I mean, you're right. Uh, everywhere in the world, there's the same pressure on on healthcare. Okay, population is growing fast. People are getting older. Yeah, the deficits are, are there. So yeah, society yeah, can't keep up with with the rising cost. So the, the pressure is is everywhere. Um, different things we can learn from from different places but what i would say from outside of of the us um, i see yeah, many of the european systems uh, run more yeah, as integrated care systems um, and that, that's a drive that i see coming in in us now um, yeah what i used to say is that yeah, in, in a healthcare system often the, the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing okay which leads to a lot of duplication yeah in activity in healthcare but also a, a miss in using information to make the best possible decision for a patient at, uh, at a given time. Okay. And so I see some of the international healthcare systems do a better job in connecting their primary care yeah, with their acute care and making sure that the patients get tracked to the system and that at any point in time, you use the information, you know, the full information you have on that patient to decide on the next step. In the so is that integrated sort of approach, is that a, is that a mandate to really drive uh, productivity? Is that something that you would advise? Certainly the IT organization yeah. can help because it cuts across the entire yeah. sphere. But talk about that a little bit. Well, I'm, uh, yes, I would, I would call it a, a mandate. Mm -hmm. to, me, to me, healthcare is, um, is about the process. Um, yeah. When you follow a patient, yeah, that gets sick to when the patient gets cured. It's a process, okay? And I think as an industry, we haven't always understood that, okay? We've seen it too much as a, as a sum of activities, but we never mm. followed the patient. If you follow the patient, you see process, you see how you can use information at the early stage to prevent yeah, disease, or yeah, at a given state in the disease, use information from a population to yeah, understand yeah, for two million other patients, this protocol worked, that protocol didn't work. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, that's that's very valuable information to make the better decision. Okay, and that's again where information technology in this industry is going to be such a game changer. Okay, it's going to enable this workflow to happen. Mm. It's going to enable following the patient, and with analytics, yeah, on the massive amounts of data now, okay, th there are ways to make better decisions uh, today. So it sounds like uh, the transition you're talking about is. Uh, the way I interpret it is kind of that transi transition from fee-for-service model to the fee-for-care, fee-for-outcome. So rather than getting paid, uh, a doctor getting paid for this procedure or that procedure, and essentially incentivizing clinicians to do yep. more procedures, yep. uh, a set amount of you know funds for a particular outcome in a patient. Right. Right. Um, uh, talk about how you're helping your healthcare clients manage that transition, get to that point. Is, there, I is that somewhere that we are, in fact, moving? Is there... Uh, are there the right incentives in place to move us to that direction, and how is technology helping enable it? So, so um, today the right incentives yeah, are in place with some of the uh, Accountable Care Act that, that's passed, um, some of the ACO models. Um, yeah, one of the the early forms that that you see today uh, goes back to bundled payments, right? It's yeah, it's somewhere in between fee for service and yeah, taking full risk for uh, a patient. Um, yeah, it's like um, you go for a knee yeah, replacement, um, and so y your insurance would pay one fixed fee for the beginning to the end of that. Okay, from the yeah the early diagnostics, the early consultations to the yeah the the uh, the surgery to the yeah, revalidation afterwards and so on. So one one series of activities that in the past would be paid yeah on a per activity basis would be paid now on a fixed. Okay. What we do uh, in, in my business, we um, have uh, one of our practice management products that provide bundled care, bundled payment uh, capability where yeah, you, you track this whole um, trajectory okay, of care, both the activity and the cost that is uh, attributed to it, and then the tracking of the payment of it. Okay, so yeah, one of our uh, IT systems and uh, other other vendors' IT systems okay, enable yeah, this more yeah, longitudinal tracking of uh, of the patient through the care process. Okay, mm -hmm. that's just one one example. So and so taking kind of a, a step back or, or looking more long term. Um, so here at the G event, uh, hearing a lot about uh, the kind of orchestrating uh, activities and analytics across an ecosystem. Uh, how does that manifest itself, manifest itself in healthcare? kind of in terms of long term connecting you know clinicians and physicians from different organizations um, what are some of the technological technological um, considerations in terms of uh, cloud we hear a lot about cloud in this yep. event and yep. that's got to have some significant uh, uh, impact on the way healthcare works with the regulations and uh, security concerns yep. um, so so what long term how do you see this playing out in healthcare yeah I, I would say the, the holy grail uh, in, in healthcare is going to be in population health management, okay, where you, within a population, okay, say a region, a big city, small country, yeah, one, two million yeah, of, uh, of, of lives covered, you're going to identify certain risk populations. Um, now, could be different levels of risk, right? You do identify uh, your, your population that today is susceptible to diabetes, okay? Or maybe earlier on, you're gonna identify population based on genetic propensity to develop certain diseases. I mean, you can, yeah, you try to be as early as you can. Yeah, but once you identify that cohort yeah, of patients with a certain risk profile, now we're gonna start to manage their wellness. Yeah, you're gonna try to prevent them from becoming ill or when they become ill, yeah, you're going to give them the best possible treatment, the best possible pathway uh, to, get, um, to, get, uh, to get cured again. Um, so thi these are processes and analytics that really play above yeah, the level of a hospital or primary care. It really yeah. plays as at, uh, at an integrated care, at an integrated delivery network level. And that's where, yeah, when we talk cloud, when we talk about bringing information up yeah, out of different silos, in a in a healthcare system, okay. Uh, I mean, there's, yeah. A typical healthcare system will have 20, 30, up to 80 different IT systems, and so, yeah. To be able to manage at that level, you need to bring the information up. Okay, and that's where cloud, yeah, is a big um, is a big capability. And then coupled with, again, workflow. 
capabilities and analytic capabilities to yeah, track the patient yeah, through this yeah, care life cycle mm -hmm. and apply analytics at the different points of, uh, of decision. It's really, it's a whole new business model. Yep. So Jan, we, we've, we've heard a lot today, we're running out of time, but we've heard a lot today about a 1% improvement yep. can have huge impact. So you just described Nirvana yep. in healthcare. Um, are we talking the better part of a decade before we can start approaching that 1% improvements? How long will this take? Yeah. To, uh, I see two phases. Um, yeah, from our experience working with performance solutions uh, across the world in yeah, current care systems, um, bringing in basic good workflow process thinking and some minimum if analytics typically gets you between 10 and 20% of benefit. Mm -hmm. um, and then when it gets to yeah, the holy grail, right? Let's say five five years from now, we're really gonna have analytics. I mean, there's another ten to twenty percent mm. uh, opportunity out there, and that's where um, I, I think we're we're probably gonna look back ten years from now and it's gonna say like information technology, yeah, things we do with industrial internet in healthcare are gonna have delivered a step change. Okay, not not a couple of percentages, but yeah, twenty thirty percent of uh, of improvement cost but also the, the care quality. And it's critical because if we don't do it, we're all in big yeah. trouble here. <laughs> <laughs> Jan DeWitt, thanks very much for stopping by theCUBE. Really appreciate your, uh, your time. Great, great comments and thoughts. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back to wrap up here from San Francisco. This is theCUBE, Dave Vellante and Jeff Kelly. We'll be right back.